Welcome to the Mondays. <laughs> Side of beef. Hey, we only do sides. <laughs> Welcome to the Mondays. All the sides you want. Get home and get on your side. What a plethora of sides. Voted best wedges. <laughs> the Golden Wedge Award 2017. You touch the side queen. Don't you touch one of these side queens out here. The big man's got to come out. Punch in the gooch. There we go. Full circle. I, I can get in bad humor. Uh, <laughs> so, you won't like me when I'm in bad humor. <laughs> Choke. Choke. Incredible choke. Word salad? Have you tried actual salad? <laughs> do you think... Rarely. No, go ahead. Do you think you've already lived your golden years, your golden years are coming, or you're currently in them? No! Bomb squad pod. Bomb squad in his hole. The man's hydrated. I have a full aquarium in my. You woke up today with a different mindset. Yeah. You can't be tempted with sandwiches or noodles <laughs> at all. He's a different man. He's, Every day they'll tempt you. He's goggins. Every day they'll tempt you. You know me, son. You know me, son. Do a sandwich? No, you know me, son. Well, the boys are trying to be healthy, so we should stick to doing that. Yeah. But you see, the difference here is I'll go to a PT twice and think that I can get away with anything. Yeah. You know, I'll be eating a full cheesecake on a Sunday night going, I worked out on Thursday. <laughs> well, you yeah, know if, what I mean? If you have the calories, calories in, over, calories out, like deficit, meat, all that shit. If you have the calories left over, you can absolutely talk on the cheesecake. No problem. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you'd have to be really fucking digging deep to stack it up. Like, what's in a cheesecake? How much calories is in one single slice of cheesecake? <laughs> Hold on, because I actually do want to know because. Do you make one of those weird stomach noises there? Like, but probably nice, nice. I don't hear you say, but yeah, it's probably it's always active. Whilst McCann Google's that, I will <laughs> let you know that uh, this was a pre-record. Yes. Now I said not to mention that, but I have OCD, and uh, <laughs> McCann is in America right now, so knowing the calorific content of a cheesecake might be relevant. It's three hundred twenty-one calories. Well, absolutely, <laughs> bang my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I think uh, when I was when I went to the Cheesecake Factory, it was fourteen hundred calories. Oh my! God. Well, Cheesecake Factory, that's like going to the gates of Valhalla. I, I had five thousand, or was it, it was like four and a half thousand calories? Are you fucking tracking in the factory? Well, it has all the, the calories oh, inside shit. of it. <laughs> that's a place where they should probably work on hiding that very well. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Do you get a jinx? Some American with the fucking the bingo wings is going. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Oh no, thank you. I didn't realize that. Oh my god. I didn't realize this birthday cake cheesecake would push me over my deficit. I think an American just looks at the numbers and goes, Oh, cows are high in this one. Must be really tasty. I got some shit from there one time, right? And this no, I was very high when I had it, so it was very enjoyable. But it was Cut that uh, out. that's illegal. Uh, sorry. Uh, and uh it was what do you call it again? Chicken parmesan, mm. right? But they had squished the chicken down to like a perf like a pancake, like a pancake of chicken. Like a schnitzel. Delicious. That's what they would do, yeah. And uh, they threw marinara sauce on top of it, right? And then, on top of that, for no reason at all, full blob of carbonara. Like spaghetti with the wee carbonara sauce in it. Mental. Just on top of the thing? Yeah. Wow. And I ate it. And it was great. Yeah. And I slept for 14 hours. I w I've been in there. Cheesecake Factory? Uh, Did you go with me? At in the Grange or the Grove or whatever? The it's, what's it called? The Grange? <laughs> the Grange is a park in Oma. The Grange? Uh, the, 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 the Grange. Grove. No, the Range pulled it down. <laughs> oh. Is that not where we were? No. No, I've been in the Cheesecake Factory in, in the gr Grove. The Grove, yeah. In the Grove, I. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, did it, you get cheesecake? Uh, I don't think I did. Oh, for fuck's sake. I, I did my usual go into, you know, like... Like, I'll go into the remor and get a kebab. You know, that's yeah. I made a real dick. I was like, can I get the wings? Or I got some real <laughs> dickhead thing. Instead of just being like, just, you know, when in Rome. Yeah, exactly. When in the Cheesecake Factory. Going to Nando's, have you any brisket? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the only place I'll eat vegan or something. I'll take the bean burger here and uh, fucking Hey, Nando's. bean burger's not bad here. Ah, it is. If, if you, you were, get it right. Ah, if you were in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need it if you were uh, fucking dying in prison. A nice spicy bean party. You know, it doesn't go in my style then. Aye, on the side of a full chicken, thank you. <laughs> 
I like one thing out of Nando's. What's that? Uh, the 20 ring. 20, 20 ring, rings? 20 ring Orolette. Yeah, that's a fucking tongue twister, that, especially when you get the cold a wee bit. 20 ring roulette. Yeah. It's, uh, is that the one where it's like different spices and all? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the one that looks the spiciest is not the spiciest. They've mm-hmm. got like a secret sneaky bitch in there yeah. where you think it's relatively plain. And then you're like, <gasps> the sneaky bitch sauce? The sneaky bitch. Yeah, the Nando sneaky bitch sauce. Don't sell a lot of that in Tesco's now. <laughs> But all their sauces, I've tried to buy their sauces and they don't taste the same as they do in the restaurant. Why is that? Um, it's probably, probably been sitting on a shelf for ages. Yeah. What is, is Perinés? <laughs> Did they make that? Is that a, like a bit of slang off the back of Nando's? Perinés? It's, well, it's kind of like fucking, you know, same family as like a sriracha mayo kind of thing. Yeah, but like no, one calls it, no one calls it like maracha or something. Nah. So Perinés, what? It's a great term. <laughs> maracha? Give me that maracha sauce. <laughs> Maracha, yeah, but like, at the, you know, it wasn't a thing pre Nando's, was it? Perinés? No. Well, no. no I, well, I think it would have been. Peri Peri chicken's always been a thing, but the Perinés thing, I don't know if they've they... done that themselves. Yeah. Now shout out to me, Hall, because he will pull out a fucking liter and a half of pepper v- sauce, vat of it. You know, like Perinés out of the out of the pelly. Yeah. You know, it'd be all the fucking, it'd be all microphones in there, wires, and then a big space left for the Perinés. If you stab me, Hall, I'd say just a gonk of pepper sauce come out of him. Mm-hmm. The man's never done with a. He's always got a wee boat of pepper sauce. Mihal's our sound tech. Yeah. At the sound Lampers. man, too. Sound man, sound enough now. Uh, what was I going to say? But Perinay, what, what I mean, what are, what's the science term from uh, for your gooch? Like, like all the elements. Oh, right. <laughs> Is it not Perinayum? Science term for gooch. Perinay's does sound like something, you know, if you've had a particularly hot day in the sun, you might be... <laughs> You might be secreting Perinase out of the perineum. Holy shit, you're right. The, He's always right. The perineum. He's Dr. Science. Also called the taint, the grundle, or gooch. <laughs> the grundle? I've never heard that before. <laughs> fucking the grundle sweat. The stink bridge, I've heard that. The bars, the, st- the stink bridge. He said that. What? The stink bridge. I don't know. I've heard, That's I've great. I've heard. That's great. <laughs> The stink bridge. <laughs> Why is it called the gooch? The gooch refers to the area between a man's anus and testicles. <laughs> While normally neutral in tone, <laughs> the gooch can also be used as an insult. I thought it meant like usually a gooch is like... <laughs> Most gooches are beige. Yeah, some of them will be darker, some of them will be lighter. <laughs> I got hit in the gooch once coming off. Of, you know when people are like, oh, you fall off your bike as a kid and like smash your ball bag? Mm-hmm. I've, I've hit the gooch real hard. Yeah. And there's a there's a disabling quality to it. You take a real shot of the gooch. Yeah, it's a factory reset. Oh, no, you feel like your ass can't work. If you punch someone directly in the gooch, mm-hmm. would that debilitate them? Like if you just, as hard as you could, just uppercut right in the well, gooch. Well, it disables your asshole for a minute because yeah. you, you got that feeling in your ass. Do you ever get hit in the face with a football and you go... It takes you a second to go, is that my nose? Is it my teeth? Is, you yeah. Know, like, what hit, where did it hit? If you could hit in the gooch real hard, you could shit yourself and not feel it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you could go like, oh, what's going on down there? Is it blood? And it's shit. What a great way to attack, you know, yeah, a potential enemy. It's called the falcon punch. Yeah. Just get them to shit themselves. Yeah. I've also seen this here. It says the no, gooch- I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on that in a fight. No. I wouldn't be like, listen, man, anyone starts selling shit with me. Straight for the gooch. Straight for the gooch. It's hard to get at. It's hard to utilize any sort of fighting style in an actual street fight. Never mind aiming for a body part that, you know, you have to get right under like a mechanic to get at. Yeah, guy falls on his back like a jiu-jitsu fight. Yeah. Come at me, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're putting the full force between two fingers? That would probably shut them down completely. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, worst comes the worst you miss and it goes in their anus. Yeah. Play them like a puppet. Yeah. The gooch found <laughs> use of John Lane during the late 1990s and early 2000s. Its actual <laughs> origins are unknown, but it would appear to have a, been a modification of the word cooch, which is slang for vagina. Coochie's, a, coochie's probably my favorite slang term for the anatomy. Do you use it in the bedroom, do you? Coochie? No. You guys look at that cooch. No, I like to stay mute. Yeah. Say nothing. <laughs> Just breathing a lot. <laughs> my dirty talk is say nothing. Yeah, not even basic instructions. No, flip over there. Get me water. <laughs> Get me water. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't mind having a quick wash. <laughs> we order something. Oh. <laughs> you just clap and shakes. I think if someone said to me, oh, "The pizza's in the oven," you got the. <laughs> I'd come do- immediately. You got the Domino's app open on her back. Oh shit! 
the de delivery boys a minute away. <laughs> there is like a there is an option in that Domino's tracker app where I'm like, what the fuck is that they're doing? Hold on, now. I like using the Domino's app because you get to see it. I haven't had a Domino's in a long time. Quality check. What's that? The, the there is uh, there's five rings mm -hmm. in the Domino's tracker, and it goes order. Obvious. Yep. Prep. Okay. Make yeah. the pizza. Bacon. Put it in the oven. Bacon. Quality check. <laughs> yeah. What is that? And that's the last step before it goes out for delivery. Did what they, does that look they like? They open the box and be like, it is in the box and then close it and then drop. <laughs> and it is actually one of the biggest things of the ring. Mm. Maybe some c just takes a bite out of it. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> ah, that's dead on there. That's dead. That's definitely a pizza. <laughs> Domino's is trash, man. Domino's will give you a hangover. I don't know. It's too much marinara. Marinara. It's dirt. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, that and, like, Ikea food, I, I have shut it down in my mind. I've never had an ink from Ikea. I was like, I can't eat out here. What do you have out of Ikea? Just a coffee table and a... No, <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even order. I ended up eating something we got for Eddie. So it was, like, meatballs and fucking wooden chips and some other shit. Did it give you the shits? No. Nah. No? I think I have IBS. Yeah. Which I would Did deserve. you get the shits out of IKEA? No, I got the shits out of McFlurry. Biscoff. I was eating... I was eating... So here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Hear me out. Been eating totally clean now mm. for about five days. Right? Have you now? The one thing I had, me and McCartney went to the pictures. Afterwards, got a McFlurry. I got a Biscoff McFlurry because I don't like Biscoff, but I like to keep it open mind. I was like, maybe the Biscoff McFlurry will turn me into a fucking Biscoff fan. Mm -hmm. It did not. But the next day I had to shit something serious. Was it the Biscoff McFlurry that did that? What I would suggest as a medical professional yes. is you have had quite a clean diet, mm -hmm. which probably your body isn't used to either. No. And then once it was like, like, what is this, 2006? Once it was like, man, this this guy's actually doing us a favor. Mm -hmm. We're getting used to the, you know, we're, we're taking in the proteins, we're taking the carbs, it's all good. And then you hit it with like whack of sugar. You probably got the sh like sugar shits. Sugar shits? <laughs> Welcome to the ring, sugar shits McCann. <laughs> Weighing in at. <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is good as mine. Uh, fucking. Uh, no, I, I read that in Forrest Griffin's book one time. He, you know, he was on a fight camp and he was eating like fucking just rice and chicken for about 12 weeks. And then he weighed in. He was like, happy days. And he had someone get like uh, a tray of donuts. And he's like, I was just fucking eating a bite out of every single one of them. Yeah. And then just his body had too much sugar. And he, he said like right before the fight, he was trying to shite and wipe his arse with gloves on. <laughs> like the way you have seagulls. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think. To be fair, pretty handy because you got the wee finger. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, if you're going to wipe your whole netty combat gloves. Uh, better than a boxing glove, you know, oh. which is you just have to wrap that and just slide it down your hole. I know. <laughs> Imagine Tyson just before a fight. I need a hand, please. I, I got dingle berries. I need you to help me. I suppose I'll be getting a shower after the fight anyway, so I might as well shit up my back. Anybody got some foam births? <laughs> <laughs> I need a baby wipe with stat. I need a baby wipe stat. I've shit up my back. The hardest <laughs> on the planet. And of course, he just has one of the funniest wee voices of all time. There's a lot of, like... Com like fighters in general, boxers and all, just talk weird. Yeah, you know, they're all like, "I'm th I'm the hardest man on the planet." You know, sucker and succotash. Yeah, there's Mike some Tyson. <laughs> Should I watch that? Brand? There was some video the other day I was watching. It went down a wormhole of people slagging off Brandon Schaub, and like it showed you an interview of him and the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, I think like so clear and crisp." And then like a recent clip on a podcast, and he's like, Duh! "Like, yeah, it, it, it happens to you. You get punched in the head too much." Oh yeah, sometimes I've even seen clips of myself, and I'm like, "I look like a guy that was a quarterback like four years ago," and you're like, "Get him out of the fucking team. He's took too much." Yeah, I've been word salad a lot recently. Word selling? It's word saladin. What's that? A word salad is whenever you say a sentence and your brain's working faster word, than word, your mouth. Word salad is a word salad. Yeah. Oh, okay, what's that mean? Like your brain's working faster than your mouth and you're halfway through a sentence and you put something in there that has no relevance to what you're saying at all. You know? And that's just been recent? So like an example would be like, oh, uh, um, I sure will go afterwards and get noodles and then probably, you know, we'll check boss time syphilis and then we'll go back from there. Like you'll just throw in a word that makes no sense in the context of what you're saying. Maybe maybe I've just heard you do it too much and I just know what you mean now. Yeah. Because I would, I would even flinch at that. You've cracked the code. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's I like, wouldn't even pick up on the cephalus bit. Yeah. I'd be like, noodles? <laughs> yeah, that's how you could buy it, is just bring up food. I definitely think doing stand-up has f- fucked me up because when you're like backstage, big gig, big odds, you know, high stakes. Oh, yeah. Lot, lot, fellow, lot of fucking, what? Steak, steak fellow, yeah. More salad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> word salad? Have you tried actual salad? <laughs> Uh, yeah sorry before you get on but like i'll be sharp and whatever and then like day to day i don't think i have that in just general speech so i'll just mm-hmm. be talking to someone i'll be like i was gonna um no idea what that sentence was going you know yeah. i'm just like i don't care enough well it's like do you feel it whenever it's like you're at a gig or even a podcast and then you come back home and you're like i can't talk at all like i literally have drained myself of speech yeah yeah it's time but you, you motherfuckers don't know this is a tough business. You think you're like, oh, I just gotta, I just gotta clock in at nine and clock out at five. Oh, I hate this job enough. Try being fucking hilarious 24 7. You know what I mean? It is tiring, you know, but you gotta get that glucose in. Oh, yeah. What did your PT tell you? Uh, said he's not a PT. But he's a good man and he's a knowledgeable <laughs> man. And he said after a workout, get a bowl of cocoa pops in the, and put 30 grams of whey protein into it. Yeah. Yeah. So would you, uh, would you but, he, that, but the shite that he eats, like fucking Mr. Cheesecake here. And then he's like, what sort of fucking animal would be eating that? <laughs> no, I'm just what like, guy, I'm a fucking pig. It's a hearty feed. Like, that's a hearty feed of pops. 30 G's of protein for on top of it. Yeah, but what's in a scoop? 20 grams. I don't know. Like a scoop. Look it up. Average average scoop size for protein. I bet it's 20 grams. But no one's doing the like flavored, like it used to be the desserty flavors. Now it's like that beef isolate, which is just no, like, you can get, you can get both. like juice. You can get both. You can get both. There's a lot of people out there would suggest that like if you can tolerate it and you're not going to shy your knickers, have a whey protein after. About 25 grams. Well, yeah. One, Give or take. One scoop of protein mm-hmm. and a bit of milk mm-hmm. poured over. You would love it, man. I'm telling you. I'm going to try it out. You go back. What's his name? Justy. You could be like, Justy. <laughs> Thanks for the hookup, bro. Cheers, bro. <laughs> I don't know how I'm fucking lifting weights. I don't know how to do a minute of Stairmaster without these cocoa yeah, pops. that would be... Me hugging him would actually have to be like... Be like this. <laughs> Guy's brick shit house, like. <laughs> no, you'd love it. Try it out. Make a vlog. Yeah. Try it out. Uh, he loves the way Rice Krispie bun straight after the workout, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That I can get better. I would listen to the guy who's absolutely yoked. Is yeah. what I would do. Yeah, you know, you sit, you stand there, and, you know, on the stairmaster, going, "You're full of shite, man. What do you know about <laughs> physics?" <laughs> <laughs> man, should... I am the stairmaster. Like. Yeah. I am. They call me at the gym. <laughs> I'm the chairmaster. <laughs> I'm the stairmaster. I'm the side king. <laughs> Shout out to all my side kings out there. Should I do all the side kings and queens that listen to the podcast? <laughs> Apparently more female listenership as well. Oh, wow. More, right. more, more side queens. Yeah. This is officially a girl boss podcast. Yeah, yeah shout out to all you hoes out there. <laughs> yeah. Just immediately drops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean hoes in a good way. Yeah. It's endearing. Look at my face. Uh, yeah, more more chicks listening. Yeah. wonder why that is. I don't know. I can only imagine the fan of your beating off in real life. You know, they're, they're probably at home. They might be on their side. Maybe. Listening to this, this, the word salad you're chucking out. You got to beat off to something. You don't even, you know, sometimes you have it on in the background. If you were a girl on your side, would you be reaching around the back for that back exposure? Those strings attached, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it'd be hard to get out through the front. You know, you might, you might do another reach around the back. Uh, or, yeah. Get out that skittle. Yeah, I should have a booby hunter. Nice. Yeah. Uh, send us in any photos or whatever you might have of that. And, uh, you know, we do have a big female listenership now, don't we? Yeah. Gonna have to start doing f- girls merch now. The Montes and all. The Montes. <laughs> Welcome to the Montes. Best takeaway. <laughs> best, best takeaway in Port of Time. <laughs> Welcome to the Montes. Side of beef. Hey, we only do sides. <laughs> Welcome to the Mondays. All the sides you want. Get home and get on your side. What a plethora of sides. Voted best wedges. In t- <laughs> the Golden Wedge Award 2017. 2007 to 2017 Golden Goose on Award winners. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Took first place certificate at the fucking Garlic Mayo Convention <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> There is a golden kebab award, though, isn't there? Probably. <laughs> yeah. I think the bla- there's a place it's in Omaha. Star- oh this is the wee star chart I have in my car. <laughs> Welcome to the Mondays. <sighs> the Ma- oh, we'll have to do a t-shirt. I'll we'll <sighs> do it. Oh, his sides over. Right. The Mondays. <laughs> Welcome to the Mondays. There it is. Look, look at that award. Oh. Fire arms and hog. <laughs> is that a golden kebab? <laughs> So I legit thought that was fucking shit for once and all. The first guy looks like they're all called Sean, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look at that award, bro. Oh no, we'll have Sponsored to do it. We'll, we'll have to do the Mantis t-shirt. Oh my Best god. Best takeaway in fucking metal stir. Oh fuck, that's so funny. Sides only. Only oh sides. God. Oh Jesus. I would go, I would no lie, that is actually a decent idea for a restaurant. Like, it's just sides, and you order, like, tapas of sides. Tapas. I would go to that. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Do you know what? Most restaurants, you know, when you hear this, sell sides. No, but it's just sides. You No mains. Do you know who's a fierce woman for the just sides? Who's that? Maureen's ma. Like, like she'll go... She'll go out instead of firework. Come on, she <laughs> she'll come out... <laughs> She'll come out and be like, can I get the battered mushrooms and the fucking, you know, Parmesan fries? Uh-huh. And uh, like, and she'll just get a, a series of sides. I like that. You know, it's good. She's a side queen. Yeah. Uh, what was the other thing you were going to say there? Sides. Golden Goujon. Golden Kebab. Oh, yeah, there should be a Golden Goujon award. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd be... See the way I got that in the archives? There should be a Golden Goujon award. Working through that salad. <laughs> um, there should be a Golden Goujon award. Because I, I do love a goujon, and sometimes you do get ones, and you're like, fuck, God, that's the perfect goujon there. Mm. Nice. Yeah, there should be a golden goujon award. Okay. Where would win? Where was the last classic goujon you had? If you say McDonald's, I'm I, the this Sphinx fucking... actually does fucking oh, lethal goujons. The Sphinx won it. No, the Sphinx won the golden kebab. Uh, okay. But they also used to do like deals every day, like student deals, where it was like the slack thing. Each day of the week was like three fifty, and it would be like fucking like a full goujon me like you knew where I gained all my weight, man. Mm. Like see secondary school, I was actually you've seen pictures of me before in secondary school, decent trim, you know. Played rugby for four weeks, did judo for four years, and then I went to uni and just all went to shit. What's the cutoff for stopping talking about uni? Uh, what was it? Ten years ago? Me? Eight years ago? Seven years ago? Seven, no, six years ago. Oh, uh, that late start. 20, 2017. Jesus. That's because I had a placement as well. Jesus. Worked at the Irish News for a year. Nice. And then went back into the final year. Beating the family off you there, too, were you? Oh, the Irish News? Oh. <laughs> Tell you who was the star of that place now. People going like, let me take a run at this tea boy. The doll. <laughs> <laughs> the doll who worked in uh, the canteen. Aye. Uh, Geraldine, if you're listening, I've never forgot about you. His only takeaway from the whole experience. What an absolute saint of a woman she was. Did she did she take care of you? You're a big, oh, a you're couple a, of extra scoops. You're a big country dad. Uh, Put that me bits of mash in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you slurping about the Irish news. Yeah. I just had a rock sack of champ every day. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Geraldine. Geraldine. Fucking listen. I can't cope. There's only so, so many handfuls of mash I can take home. <laughs> oh, God. Of course, she's called Geraldine too. Like, oh yeah, for you know? sure. Um, but yeah, no, like when you're left your own devices like that, you find out what a pig you actually are. You know, well, like at uni. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when you're in charge of your full day for the first time ever in your life, you find out what a piece of shit you actually are. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I lived with some fucking uh, ours was like Great British venue, our fucking house. Everyone, who's cooking tonight? Boys doing chilies, no? Couple of handy chefs. Yeah, shit, yeah. Yeah, we never had that. Like, no, we do. Yeah. We never had a we never had a full house like cooking night ever. Oh, we did, man. We had nachos. Boys drinking wine and all. Drinking wine in uni? Fuck <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there was, was a lot of people cooking for each other. Yeah. No. Someone would make like a big stew. That's right. I told you before. I burnt the fucking halls down nearly cooking a fillet steak. That's right. Who's doing that? I know. Who's doing that? We haven't do hoist on duck in the next week. <laughs> hoist on duck. <laughs> 
right next to fucking Demandis. Hi, some duck. Hi, some duck. <laughs> some duck, hey. <laughs> right next to Demandis. Some duck, hey, sauce. <laughs> Come down here to Demandis, and if, if you're feeling uh, fucking exotic, go next door to some duck, hey. Demandis, always on your side. Crispy duck. Or as I call it, purple chicken. Get on in there. <laughs> 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 but yeah, fuck, we had none of that. It was just, we lived in a crack then, like. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty stinking too, like. Everyone discovered their cat fizz and all, and, you know. You ever on the cat? I've been on it once in my life, and never again. Really? I didn't know you did it once. No, never. I didn't. I it, gave in once. It doesn't It doesn't seem appealing to me at all. No. It was one of them things I knew I wouldn't like it, and then I took it, and I was like, yeah, I should have known. I should have trusted myself. Aaron McCann, known cat head. <laughs> Fierce man for the cat. Was this episode not supposed to be all deep with questions at all? Yeah, you want some deepness? Oh, yeah, that, that was the whole plan. We were, I mean, we had a big chat in the car about, you know, we're talking about Jonah Hill being controlling with his his woman. And, yes. uh, you know, we were talking about that. And then I was saying, there's nothing more weaponized, or there's nothing worse than, like, weaponized therapy. Yeah, stop weaponizing therapy. Talk stop to weaponizing therapy. Psychos. <laughs> Don't go to ther don't don't go to therapy, learn the words and then come back and fucking tell me all that shit. You're gaslighting me. Aye. You wouldn't attack. You wouldn't do that anything else. You wouldn't go to a boxing class and then go home and spark out your girlfriend with the technique, with the swift jobs you've learned. Don't do the same with therapy. Okay. Not the same, but yeah. <laughs> Plenty of people probably do. <laughs> you're not you're gaslight, no fucking gaslight you. Yeah. Eight week training camp. <laughs> Come back. Oh, fucking show you. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, fuck. But yeah. That. Listen, we got mainly female listeners. We do not condone domestic violence. No. Uh, one way or the other. You touch a side queen. Don't you touch one of these side queens out here. The big man's got to come out. <laughs> punch in the gooch. There we go. Full circle. I, I can get in bad humor. Uh, <laughs> so, you won't like me when I'm in bad humor. <laughs> Call Chihulk. Chunk. Incredible Chihulk. And he doesn't even rip his clothes off, he just takes off his shirt, <laughs> button my button. Ah, you're fucked now, sir! I think I'm over there jive all over your head. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm talking about headphones, don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, sorry, where were we there? Oh, oh you're Jonah Hill. Jo yeah. Jonah Hill. Uh, yeah, it is... It is weird. Well, the thing we talked about where it was like... A boundary is not something that you're like, oh, this is something you're going to do now. A boundary is like a setup for yourself. Yeah. To yeah, benefit yourself. Yeah, he sounded like he was making up rules for the this girlfriend that was 25. Yeah. She's young and wild and free. Yeah, you let her surf. Let her, her ride the wave. Frizzy weirdo. Yeah. Fuck's sake. But then it's like you said, he's probably went down to the beach the odd time and seen all these, you know, surfer boys with their beautiful otter bodies and head packs. Yeah. And been like, ah, oh, she's gonna leave me for one of these bastards. Cowabunga, you know, sounds yeah. like that. Yeah. Cowabunga, what's that day? I was in Superbad. So, you know, we're getting deep, are we? You wanted to do some existential questions and. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a go. I anyway, believe, I believe you started the podcast or before we recorded saying you want to talk about death. Yes. Great. Yeah. Here we go. Well, no, because it does, this is the thing is like, death doesn't have to be seen as like a morbid. Like, it's like if people are scared to talk about it and talk, how are you playing jazz music? Yeah. Right now? <laughs> 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 uh, no, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. We're being serious. Like, you yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Do you personally have, like, you may not have, like, a bucket list, but is there, like, any things that you're like, I would like to achieve or do this before I die? Of course. Of course. Our exam. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's one specific thing or two specific things or whatever. But yeah, I would like to, you know, like visit a lot more places, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, you know what I mean. Um, that do you know what? That's probably it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You you know, I have a child now. You want to see him grow up and become a fully fledged adult. Fuck yeah! Who's not a lunatic? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A strong empathetic boy yeah you know that's what you want yeah thoughtful kind good manners or i'll knock his fucking yeah uh 
You better have that before I'll beat the bag. <laughs> you, you fucking say thank you or I'll come over and fucking put your face in that dog shit. You can't. Uh, That's great. But yeah, stuff stuff like that, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, like, do you, do you have any big ones that are just like, this is what I want to do for I don't. Now? No, I don't have any, like, quantifiable... You don't like really want things. that because if you had one goal nah. and then it was over, you'd be like, well, that's it. I'm happy enough to be hit by a train at any point now that well, I've achieved that. That is the thing is like, that's whenever, you know, when people are like, when I get this, I'll be happy. Or if I do this, then everything's fine. That never happens. You have to kind of get like a general vibe going for yourself day to day life. Yeah. You know, a guy have friends who are like, oh, you know, I just want to be in a relationship. And you're like, but that's not gonna like that. You have to be happy single before you get into a relationship yeah you know what i mean oh yeah because then you'll never be happy again no and it's also <laughs> a lot to put all your well-being on another person yeah you need you need just red yes there we go yeah yeah you know since we're getting deep with it yeah you need red out yeah so deep redden a de- good reddens <laughs> is what you need <laughs> And then see how much you want to fucking, you know, be with someone walking around Ikea all day. That's true. You know what I mean? Once you come, what's it like? Ikea? No. (laughs) (laughs) You get arrested. (laughs) What's it like? Prison for a while? (laughs) Morning, I'm real sorry, but I can't look at another mahogany table before (laughs) Boston in here. (laughs) Test the bed out. Fuck, this is comfy. Surely that's happened, by the way. Someone's pulled one off. Someone's like, yeah. pulled their wire in Ikea. Someone has definitely pulled one, got in their bed and pulled one off in Ikea. Someone's definitely shot in the toilet. Yeah. That wasn't functional. Yeah. Uh, that's an insane thing to do. Shite. Shite in a non-functioning toilet. Like, even yeah, for oh, yourself, yeah. like, the thought of your shite, like, lying. It's easier cleaned up if you just shot on the floor. Yes. If, hey, if you're going to shit anywhere, shit on the floor. Yeah, they get the scooper out. Yeah, get, get the, the dustpan quick. Yeah, Sco- scooper. Someone stuck a pile here on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, you know the way we, when we shed, it's like piles. Do you think women do that? I, just what I thought. We we we'd said everything that needed to be said about shit. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We've got a new. Term. I keep I keep going back to it. You know when you drop a pile and you're like, is my lady capable of that? <laughs> 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 Oh jeez, boys, we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to make a pile. I'm going to make a stack. <laughs> Cack stack. You know when you make a uh, turf lodge? <laughs> and turf you, lodge. you sit back and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, you, know, you know it's so normal. You know when you make a pile. <laughs> Mom, ma! I'm going to make yeah, a pile. I'm going to pile. Hold my, cool, hold my calls. <laughs> Move that meeting, mum. <laughs> Cancel my appointments. I'm going to make a pile. Well, we got sincere there for about 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what is this diary of a CEO? Who am I, Stephen Bart? <laughs> Mickey Bartlett, more like. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Mickey is like the final Pokemon of me. Uh, I can feel myself slowly creeping into it year by year. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, what was the end of that story? You know when you make a pile and then what? Could a girl make a pile? Yeah, you're like, there's no way my... You know, there's no way that a girl is capable of this. Nah, you know? girls drop some logs too. Like, I th- <laughs> do you know why they're always like, oh, I, uh, you know the IBS chat we had where they're like, oh, I'm shitting too much or I can't shit? Yeah. See, when they're in that I can't shit phase, get ready for the fucking... The Swiss roll. I just don't know. Like, obviously, like, you know, the, the women shit, but it's like, are they capable of such destruction? Yeah. Do you see that fucking uh, reel I showed you before? Or that just, you know, that American, like, middle of the country, no teeth, big yes. fat bitch? And she was like, oh, today I'm making, I'm making hot dogs and chili. And yeah. the, the hot dogs looked like they would give you diarrhea looking at them. And the chili looked like diarrhea. Yeah, and she, she was like, ooh, wee, taste this now. Yeah, you know, you don't think she's making pies? She's pumping out some trailer trash shit. I mean, her garden would look like you know when people like stack turf up on a field and just yeah. those wee dots of forever. Is I had no idea that you know how everyone throws about white trash. Yeah, I kind of was like, I I don't think I know what that is. And then when I went to America, it turns out all those things <laughs> I like, 
It is it is white trash. Yeah. You know? Nesquik, white trash. Cheesecake Factory's pretty white trash. Applebee's is very white trash. But I love all of it. Applebee's is basically like an American Wetherspoons. But can you <clears throat> if you're doing it like it'd be like you're doing it almost ironically, like you're going, Oh, it's good crack to go here, it's funny. No, I you genuinely like it. Like, if, as a if, business, I'm like, like, this is great. Like, if it's someone's birthday and you get dressed up to go to Applebee's, that'd be white trash, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that was... But you're just in there because it's, like, $20 to eat yourself blind? Yeah. Nice. It's great. And, like, the characters, oh, the Applebee's characters. The characters. You never know what you're going to get. There's one in Times Square. That's the final mission. Oh, yeah. That's the final boss. You go in there, you will get into an argument with someone about politics. It's crazy. I mean, there there shouldn't be anything wrong with white trash. That's that's the type of white person you want. Yeah. The trashy, down low white person. Yeah. You know, the real evil white person is the, you know, the fucking... Someone who wouldn't step foot in Applebee's. I own a bank. Because yeah, I think they're better than it. Yeah, you want white trash. Yeah. You don't want, like, old white money. Me yeah. and Desiree went to Applebee's one time. There you go. And, uh... She got booed out of it, did she? she <laughs> is that how white trash it is? It, not a- in it. Not today, <laughs> Mrs... Not today, madam. <laughs> they still rolling on like fucking. This is Long Island. Long it's Island still got is segregation still... in fucking Applebee's. I mean, Long Island's not too far. Like, Long Island is insane because it technically is New York, mm-hmm. but it's like a like a forty minute drive, and it's just like desolate mm. and like a lot of heroin, mm. like a lot of heroin. Nice, like Dublin. Hmm. Mm. But not as like you know, not as many franchises and all and stuff like that. Like it's kind of like the land of time forgot. Sounds good. All <laughs> right, I'm gonna hit you another deep question. Deep one go. Do you think? Rarely. No, go ahead. Do you think you've already lived your golden years? Your golden years are coming, or you're currently in them. And what is the golden years? It depends in which facet of my life you're talking. No, I I always feel like I'm do, I'm working for something better all the time as my body slowly closes down, <laughs> as my hips quietly turn to dust. Yeah. My lower back is but a memory. Race against the clock, on good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I always think I always think there's something better coming. Yeah, I know, think so too. Do you know what I mean? I always think you know working towards something bigger and better and bigger and better. Although that is exhausting sometimes. I always I always think like um, you know like if you can get yourself to a place where you're like if if all this, say like comedy type stuff stopped, mm-hmm. would you you know could it stop? Mm-hmm. And it, probably. Yeah. You know. And just crack on with something else. I think that I think the ideal scenario is to have that middle line where it's like, yeah, you're looking forward to the future, but also you're appreciating the now that you're currently in. I always think that, like, the you know, I heard someone co- have a quote one time, and they're like, "Twenties are for trying stuff, thirties mm-hmm. are for figuring it out, or something. Forties are for making money, and then fifties are for chilling, coasting." I really hope so. So, like, you would, I would, I've said this before, but I'd love to get to the point where I just like do things that I want to do when i want to do them mm-hmm. all this scheduling bullshit yeah you know fuck off well that'll come with time Aye. do you remember what you were doing when you were my age now 28 just pulling myself asunder nice uh 28 no i was like i haven't really changed any of the things i do yeah it's just the intensity and the scale of them has went up yeah like i was still podcasting i was still doing stand-up i was still fucking whatever else then yeah but it's just got bigger and better but that's how it should be, though, where it's busier. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's an upscale trajectory. And I have a child now. But then also, there was a lot of, you know, you look back and go, oh, man. You actually look back and you go, what the fuck was I playing at? Like, I had so much time. I was fucking about something shocking. You know, there was a lot of fucking just, oh, well, we'll have pints tonight for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. But you, do, you do need it. I mean, I'm currently in that. But do you think you're only looking at that because it's like, you kind of, you kind of regret having that fuck about time, but at the same time, you needed it. Oh, right, you definitely almost like get out of your system. You definitely probably need it. Yeah, like whenever I started stand up, and you know, me and Mickey would literally have like a kitty of money where we're like, "Who's buying the drink tonight?" Yeah, and we'd sit in the fucking 
you know, in the garage at my dad's house and like smoke fags and drink. And you, you're sort of going like, you're a fucking waster, whatever. But like on the rite of passage to be a professional comedian. Yeah. It needs to be a lot of sitting about, bored kind of, talking a lot of shit. Yeah. But you're only looking at it as a waster thing now. Like back then, you I know, if, no, no, I probably felt more like a waster then. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because everybody around you, because like, you know, you're not really making any money or doing anything for yourself. So everyone's going like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Well, that's the issue. If you're going down a kind of creative path, um, you know, you are going to have your friend circle and everyone around you sort of progress in their career and make good money and, you know, have disposable income and you're just kind of roaching it. Yeah, but that you know, then you'll do like a waterfront or, or maybe a bigger gig in the future, mm-hmm. and everyone will be backstage talking into your fridge full of beers, and you'll be like, "Who's a fucking waster now? <laughs> Wait for my invoice, bitch." You might have a wee bit of a hangover when you go back to your shitty <laughs> job tomorrow, nursing or you know whatever. Fucking you probably do like a good job, and you're slagging them. Yeah. Oh yeah, they all enjoy do. teaching children tomorrow. Yeah, enjoy when I'm craft in, a, in the future. When I'm fucking in a hotel room on my third nut of the morning. I enjoy Biff and Chip and Monday, you can't. Right. My Biff and loads <laughs> up the wall of this hotel. <laughs> Chip and away. Guy, you know, Aaron's on his like fifth night at the SSE in a row. Still knee tap. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm knee tap for life. And knee tap still skints it for some reason. I think I'll only start to upgrade stuff like that whenever I'm actually in a relationship and then it'll be out of an embarrassment. All right, you'll just scumbag it for life. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, anytime's just like you just want a bed. Like, are there any personality traits that you have that completely clash with who yourself? Like, do you have any personality traits, and you're like, I'm this, and that fucks up this for me? Oh, I have a, a focus issue. Mm-hmm. You know, I should I should get on that Adderall. You, mo- you motherfuckers better watch out when I hit that Adderall. Oh, Adderall. it's over for you, hoes, when the big man gets on the, the Adderall. The big man gets on the Adderall, bro. <laughs> Fucking, he's got an ounce of focus in his body, bro. Yeah. How many meltdowns have I had since I walked in here this morning? I know, I was, I couldn't stop laughing earlier when you were like, I had another bout of many at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just, th- I just fucking, you know, I'm con- I just, uh, I constantly think about things. What can I do? Cre- you know, it's like, you know, you can be like creative to a point where it fucks you off. Oh, it's great until you have to go to bed at night, you know? Yeah. And then it's that Doug Stanhope bit where it's like the fucking carnival in your head goes off. What are you doing, you fucking loser? If I if I had if I had better focus, I think I'd be fucking flying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I, I don't know I don't know what that, that trait is where you're just like, we'll do this. Oh, and that would be cool. Oh, and then this is good. I think we should do that. And we should change that. And what about this? We'll be cool if we do that. And then you're like, there aren't enough fucking, you know, hours in the day mm-hmm. or fucking days in the week, you know? So that's probably, if I could just go, that's a good idea. Let me complete this. Yeah. Oh, this is the next idea. Let me complete this. Yeah. I'd get way more done than going like, let's do it all yesterday. 100%. You know, so that's uh, that's an issue of mine. The last thing, now that I was like, this is an idea that I really want to do and I feel like I want to finish it, was that, that Blender documentary. And then I was like, no, now, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I think that's common, though, you uh, know? Uh, maybe. Especially in, like, where you're your own boss and shit, like... I would say... Mine's is, I would say I'm ambitious. However, that gets teetotaled by just so much fucking inherent laziness and procrastination and overthinking. Mm. That's my issue. It's like, I know all the shit that I have to do, but I just don't do it. Yeah. And I constantly make a decision to not do it. You know, you're one of the, you're a victim of self-help books where it's all fucking three-year plans, five-year plans. Yeah. And your plan should be two-hour plan. Yeah. What are you doing in the next two hours? Yeah, 100%. You should have, you know, you're sitting there with a dream board and you're like, hey, having a wake board for the, for the next till five o'clock today. Yeah. That's your problem. Yeah. Because you have mad dreams mm-hmm. and then just some basic day-to-day 
maintenance yeah. <laughs> would, would fucking get you there a lot quicker. Yeah, 100%. But you're cool. We're going like, yeah, I'll move to New York and uh, I'll do stand-up for five years and then I'll book somewhere. Like, you know where you're booking for a gig in fucking three years. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'll book that and then I'll see what the see what the appetite's like for tickets and uh, <laughs> for you know Master Square Garden and then whatever and whatever. And then you'll be like, um, I've lost my bus ticket. <laughs> yeah. So I'm can, can I'm just gonna hitch a ride to Lurgan. Yeah. See if we can get the bus. Yeah. So Nailed it. That's it. You're long sighted. And then anything up close, you're like oh, fuck that. Yeah. 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 But again, it's like you know, I think though that is the thing where it's like you know what you have to do. It's just like a case of I mean, it's like anything. It's why there's fucking PTs to make a fortune because it's like people know already what they have to do. Yeah. But then it's having that accountability and like someone over you being like, "Are you fucking doing the shit that I told you to do?" Yeah. You know. Do you need a life PT? I actually, yeah, I think I do. A life coach. I just need someone to DM me the whole time, being like, "The fuck you at." <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> there will come a time where there will, <laughs> there will come a time where I'll just have watched every sitcom and then have to face my goals. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. Yeah. That's why I started Silicon Valley last week. <laughs> just to prolong the fucking Good old ten season show. Yeah. Ooh, nice amount of time to slide past the agenda. A lot of things you say to me are I from next week on I'm starting this. And I, I don't mean like fitness things or anything you're always just like yeah from next week on i'm gonna start uh putting some notes down for this podcast yeah from next week on yeah. i'm gonna start doing this yeah. you know but a lot of it too is crippling overthinking oh yeah well i watched this guy doing a lecture about adhd he was some doctor and he was like you know he's like adhd is you know the information you know how to apply it you could tell someone else how to do something but you cannot you simply can't do it for for yourself yeah so maybe you're full of the HD. Maybe we've got a couple of ADHDs in there. Yeah. I got the AD, you got the HD. <laughs> Our new podcast. <laughs> AD and HD. Shut up, it's AD and HD. <laughs> we'll see you next, when? I don't know, what? Are we recording? No, we're on a third attempt here. Smoke weed every day. I like this, by the way. Do you? Yeah, how do you feel about it? He hates it, he's like, it fucking hasn't been a clip yet. <laughs> He's like, can you pause it and just do a couple of ones? Clips McGee over there, can, starving. Can you? Feed <laughs> me. Man's fiending for a clip. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Demonte, <laughs> Demonte's winning, do you? What the fuck is this sentimental bullshit about, boys? Yeah. What are we having, breakthroughs? What are you having, a conversation? Back to the shit. <laughs> People love the shit. Though. Chop, chop. Back to shit. You're not talking about cocks enough. <laughs> he just fucking cut. You know that, that fucking meme you posted the other oh, day? Yeah, yeah. Do it again, but good. <laughs> <laughs> that is you. That is you. That's literally now. Rolling and action. <laughs> fucking daily lunch over here. Just comes over. <laughs> Take two, but it's not shite. I need a bullhorn. Yeah. <laughs> is that from like a documentary about that fella? That uh, still you posted? I think, yeah, I think it's just like behind the scenes or something. Is he just like a chaotic director or like what's the crack with him? Yeah, I... off the rails. Yeah. He's an absolute... Oh, he's hilarious. Is he more famous than his films? Uh, he's probably like a Tarantino-y vibe. Yeah. What's the biggest David Lynch film? He did Pulp like Fiction? Twin, Twin Peaks. <laughs> Twin that Peaks? Show. I haven't seen it. Mulholland Drive. Blue Velvet. Scrappers, lad. Eraserhead. That sounds like shit. <laughs> Blue Velvet's at the lesbians fingering each other? Uh, yes, we've... <laughs> Maybe I will watch. Mm, Blue Velvet. <laughs> Do it again, but good. Some cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'd love a cupcake. I'd fucking rip for a Blue Velvet right now. <laughs> Blue Raz, Blue Raz. I'm dying. A lot of pressure, man. I've caught whatever you've got now. No, I, I wouldn't wish it my worst enemy. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ, no. I hope you haven't, I. Not even the Taliban? No. <laughs> How has the head been? Weirdly, right? By the way, thank you to everyone who fucking DM me and give me uh, advice for headaches. What a sound little community accounts we have. But uh, it's uh, it, it only comes in the morning, first thing, you? and last thing before bed. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah, it actually is fully... Don't we all, brother? It's in time with me would you know first thing in the morning and last thing at night oh my god imagine it was related 
Imagine when you got a route, all the blood just sank south and you got a big migraine. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 God. It'd be the oh, worst. God. It'd be the worst. I have to cut it off. It'd be the worst of all time. Your head. Your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus, you need some machinery for that. And big two boys at the end of a saw. <laughs> Imagine you were in like old timey France getting beheaded. Old timey France. Did you let that guillotine go and just hit you in the back of the meat? Guillotine. And, and you're like, ah, Jesus. Why would it be left, the guillotine? Eh? Huh? Why would it be left? It'd be better than hanging, I think. No, no, I'd take the guillotine. That's what I mean. Over hanging. Oh, I... That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Straight off. Pick your poison. Although they'd need a couple of runs at it with you. Aye. They'd probably, like, slice down. They'd, like, raise it up again. <laughs> Shung. We're just gonna take a couple more. Yeah. You just... Oh! Like, trying to cut through ham with a chopstick. <laughs> Fuck that, man! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your next question for me? In the, uh, welcome back to Going Deep on Your Side. We're getting. What do you think is more important? How people perceive you or how you perceive yourself? Well, I think we all know from everything I've heard online, it's how you perceive yourself. Mm hmm. You know, because people run around doing fake titties and fucking <laughs> fake tan and lips and all and fellas buying shit and fucking getting hair transplants so that they they look better for others. Mm -hmm. That's how you're perceived, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and most of those people hate themselves. Yes. You know? But I do I do think it's um I think a healthy person has a bit of both. Because we had conversations earlier and mentioned no names, say nothing. But like we we were talking about people going like, do they not know that they're doing this? Yeah. You know, so you need a bit of both. You need to be looking at yourself going, I'm happy enough with the way I am and the way I treat people. And, but you don't want to act in a certain way that makes you a bit like psychopathic. Yeah. You know, you want to be able to, you know, have a bit of self-awareness and be like this is not perceived well well you have to trust yourself and know to know that like you don't have to constantly tread on eggshells and be like oh yeah the way i am default hopefully is being perceived in a good way by people like if you think you treat people good then that should be all that matters otherwise there's a faulty thinking pattern in how you think good behavior looks yeah 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 i'm trying to think of an example of that but yeah 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 I think yeah I think it's like buying a kid too many Christmas presents look how mm -hmm. good I look ruin them yeah you know turn them make it an asshole that's what you're doing do people still do that like post the fucking well, job lot of gifts on Facebook well I think it had a bit of a backlash over the last few years yeah you know the kid let me tell you something the kid doesn't give a fuck yeah they think it's Santa they don't give a fuck yeah, about yeah, theirs that you work yeah or you're paying it off for the rest of the year yeah and you, you know you know what the worst thing is about having children you go, look what I got you. And then, like, they have more crack with the box that it came in. You know? Like, oh, look at me in a box. Mad yeah. crack. Yeah. you're like, that's a quad, you ungrateful. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So, kids are, you know, kids don't give a shit. You're do you are doing it for other people. It's funny whenever you're a child, too, and, like, the Christmas gifts are getting laughed out, and then you start communicating with the rest of your class in primary school, and you start to find holes in the plot. You know? Like, I remember my big one was, I said to someone, I was like, I, mum said to leave a beer out for Santa because he really likes it. Yeah. And this girl in my class was like, no. No. He drinks milk. And you're like, just Santa must have been ill last night. He must have had too many beers. He must have had a beer at everyone's house because he, he bugged up the bathroom door. No, mum strictly said to leave a six pack of Guinness for Santa. <laughs> no, Santa wants flame grilled steak McCoy's. <laughs> <laughs> or go fuck yourself, I believe the note said. Santa strictly demands a stroganoff. <laughs> and I wouldn't bother leaving carrots out because he said he, there was carrots, but yeah. I don't think the, I don't think the reindeer got yeah. the carrots. No, them reindeers, they ate me too. No, they didn't. the guy seen, I think the reindeer must have put the carrots in the bin. <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so. Cookies? No. No, 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 no. no. You're my full Pavlova. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, Santa's IBS. <laughs> he had the cookies, but you know, he shit everywhere. 
So. Yeah, <laughs> better cross crangle than the old cross wrangle. <laughs> I remember they used to ha- they used to hide the the Christmas presents in the loft. I'm losing my mind. Well. Loft in our house, you know, yeah. they just fucking open the wee hatch and throw the cr- presents up there to hide them. Yeah, and then obviously one year, my mom was in my bed. I was a young child, like, and she was like, "Oh, can you hear Santa?" I was just, clearly my dad just in the loft hammered. <laughs> Ringing bells all over the place. Can, shh, can you hear Santa? No way in this fucking place appreciates yeah. me. I got fucking, I got fucking fiberglass in my shoe. Oh, so don't go to the pub before I go get the turkey. All right, that on. Don't worry about it. Can I play the clip? My dad being a bastard. Oh my days! This is so funny. Big man's on a cruise, right? And the the video is him reaching for a glass of champagne with the waves crashing outside the boat. <laughs> And uh, we need to hear this for a zinger, man. Make this a button. He's a zinger. This should be a button. He reaches for the champagne. Can you hear the clink? Cheers. Can you hear this fucking asshole? Cheers. Life's a bitch, but someone has to do it. Having <laughs> <laughs> a champagne and a life's a bitch, but someone has to do it. Fantastic. Dumbbells area in there. Such oil boy talk to you. Like. Oh, <laughs> li- oh it's, life's tough, isn't it? I love it when I read it. I remember. <laughs> I've had worse Tuesdays. That's one step above. I've had, I've had worse Fridays. <laughs> yeah. or today's office. Today's office. Because <laughs> <laughs> never been in an office in his life. That's the worst. That's the worst whenever uh, a comedian posts a picture of like a fucking 3,000 seater theater and they're like, Today, oh, yeah, today's yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Musicians do that too. Yeah. Today's office. Yeah. Fuck up. <laughs> yeah, you're the opening act, you cunt. <laughs> yeah, get the tea on. <laughs> Print me off my set list. Get that writer going. You fucking you skivvy bitch. <laughs> uh, Top of the top was one by what you should say. <laughs> but like when he was doing the shittest things. Like, <laughs> he's coming to us. He's eating dinner. Uh, not made for anybody else. And you're like, oh fuck, you enjoying that? And he goes, oh, top of the top. <laughs> That's great though. Top of the top and a bitch at the bottom. That's <laughs> what he's still for what? Oh fuck. I, yeah. You you keep saying tough at the top, and I'll be like, life's a bitch, but someone has to do it. <laughs> when I'm eating like sandwich later. Yeah. Life's a bitch. Someone has to do it. Yeah, there's no one better. I don't even know if that's a real quote, is it? Should I have told you about uh, the, <laughs> the text in my family WhatsApp group from... My family WhatsApp group, by the way, is just non-stop value and entertainment. But my brother <laughs> wrote into it just whenever you were playing that clip of your dad. My brother Connor goes, 34 degrees in Warsaw, bring it on. Because <laughs> he's heading there next week. <laughs> Get them like that big fucking McCann head fried to pieces. That's <laughs> <laughs> two two seconds into being at that festival, and then you're just fucking oh, sir, I was streaky bacon. Up, I got bacon fries head, man. Uh, you need to get a, bit of, get a bit of sauce on that. Get a bit of cream on it. Yeah, no, dude, I just burn all the time, like yeah, and it never turns. It never turns brown. We we stopped off at the office on the way home. Do you remember? Oh, I, and she was like, Jesus, he's taking a fucking. <laughs> He's taking a few shells to the head. Oh, she said he was like, the sun took to you anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's fun to me, Bridget. Uh, <laughs> you're no hiding. No hiding that head. Give us a bullet. Do you like what you do? You know, no, no. <laughs> you know, you're all pandering. <laughs> Have a bottle, Jack. <laughs> it's top of the top. Top of the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. You should get a, a hat made that says top of the top. Top of the top. Yeah. Top of the top. Did we do one more deep question? Then we'll uh, hit the bricks. This is my nose, man. Is that a euphemism for sandwiches? Just walk away. <laughs> shout out to sandwiches, by the way. Yeah, shout out to sandwiches. Give us a bunch of t-shirts. Um, Didn't give me one. You weren't there. You weren't there. You, you weren't there. We have a life outside of you. They're not going to send it to them in your house. Are they? they should. Let's go now. Get our first bomb squad uh, lunch. They should make a sandwich called the horny goat. Get that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the horny goat. <laughs> Guanciale. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> beef cheek, and it's in like you know quotes. Beef cheek and uh, <laughs> 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 the guanciale. <laughs> such a funny thing to me. <laughs> such a funny thing to attach to. <laughs> I love the 
Grand Shelly. I know, it's like the worst banter. Well, there's Grand Shelly Fagan there. There he is. Grand Shelly, champ. Good Good. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Grand Shelly. Right, can I do two more on you? Because this would you wear that t-shirt? Would you wear that t-shirt? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. thick t-shirt, you know. And they do fucking a tier sandwiches, top shelf stuff all together. Oh, the sandwiches. Watch yourselves now, because it's tough at the top. But here, that's a bitch. <laughs> Someone, someone's got to eat them. Um, let me see now. Right. How do you bounce back from a curveball life throws your way? Now, I either lean into it hard. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, I have two choices. I lean into it hard or like a psychopath. I'm, I, I'm quite good at just closing a door behind me. Yeah. You know, which I don't think is, you know, I've heard from several different people. I don't know if that's healthy, particularly, to be able to just go, oh, well, that's over. And just walk into the distance. Um, but yeah, that's usually the two coping mechanisms. Yeah. You know. What sort of curveball we're talking to? Run out of milk or fucking someone died? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's a it's a long island list, like, but I think... Uh, I don't know. What do you do with curveballs? I think... Uh, what would be a big curveball for you this year? America? Yeah, probably. Like if they were like, you're not allowed in? Yeah, that would be. Well, again, I'm planning now to move in January. So I guess we just see what happens there. But Nice. I think, uh, yeah, probably that. But then it's one of those things where it's like, if it's something that you're emotionally invested in, like something happens and you're like, you know, makes you sad a wee bit. It's important to feel whatever you're feeling and then come out in the end of it and be like, all right, that's enough time now. Wallowing. Time to fucking get on what? No more wallowing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, just feel what you feel. Yeah. And then charge at it. You do come out of things. You know, you feel that on a, on a, reg I feel that on a regular basis. Oh, you do. Eh? You know, you're just saying, oh, fuck, I can't be arsed with this shit. Yeah. And then you do whatever combo of things you do by accident. Well, went to the gym. And oh. sometimes you don't know until you're on the other side, is it? Yeah. Like, sometimes I've had it before where I'm like, oh, shit, I was depressed as shit. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, oh, okay, this is what it's like. We're back to baseline now, you know? I'm also th very, in a, in a very male way, I think, stubborn and stupid. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll be like, right, it's, like, the one time I went to CBT, and I was trying to explain my shit to him, and the guy was like, are you sure this isn't just because it's the most stressful time of your life ever? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I probably is. Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't have the pressure. Yeah. You know? So I'm not good at realizing, like, oh, yeah, well, of course you're going to feel something. Yeah. If things are mental. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know? You know? But I, I would be very, you know, I would, like, book a load of things and just have, like, absolutely the most hectic week of all time. Yeah. And go, like, ah, it's, I'm done with this shit. I'm going to fucking, I'm getting into property or something. You know, I'm doing a different job. Fuck this. Yeah. Um, and then you realize you're just like, no, you're just doing too much. If you were doing too much of anything, you'd be fucking... But also, everyone has that with every job ever, you know, mm -hmm. where they're like, fuck this. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And everyone's going to get a situation. Like, everyone, unfortunately, everyone gets curveballs, you know? Oh, yeah. They come. Oh. You know? Their balls come left, right, and center. But you got to swing that bat, champ, you know? Yeah. You got to knock it out of the park. That's it. Gorgeous. Keep on swinging. Da, da, da. I wish I had that button. Da, da, da. <laughs> Keep on swinging. The guy that couldn't hit a baseball with a bat, if he was on a hey, You're sadly wrong. Oh, is this like the bench? I've been in the batting range. Oh, listen to fucking Babe Ruth over here. <laughs> you look like Babe Ruth. Google, Google Babe Ruth. Babe is in the pig in the city. Here, we, we always joke, uh, me and you would fit right into the baseball world. <laughs> Babe Ruth actually kind of looks like me if you put like a bicycle pump to my cheek. <laughs> that's what I mean. He's got uh, like, you yeah, that there. One day in the sun, that's what you look like. That's me after like six pints in Mallorca. I love the way, I don't know anything about baseball, but everyone's like, oh, he's one of the best of all time. And all. Bro, 
Uh, it's baseball. Yeah, it's baseball, <laughs> but also, like, come on. You're telling me there isn't a fucking yoked fucking Mexican guy now that is better than him? Did you this old boy? Did you took a bad turn? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Baby oof. Color, color grade and done him dirty there. <laughs> Why do they keep putting him next to this guy? Oh, he's the biggest record since Babe Ruth, okay. Oh, uh, right, okay. Look at that stance, bro. Them trousers. But, the, yeah, a lot of baseball boys are just big, thick boys that can absolutely scalp it into the fucking, into the rafters. Oh, why? Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, let the money get to his head. Hey, babe, it's tough at the top. It's tough at the top. So <laughs> life's a bitch, but someone's got to be it, lad. He can find the hat that fits you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he got that bowler hat in him. Yeah, that's the only thing's going to fit you now, is a bowler hat. Big orange McCann. Oh, what are we saying, baseball? Smoking a wee dog turd. Have you some money? Fuck your head. Oh, here's the Babe Ruth ball. The worst barrel you could find. <laughs> you had to ride it on with a quill, that. 50k. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is that currently for sale right now? Yeah. I like how they've got the side profile <laughs> of it, too. Goddamn. Um, right, I'll end on a slightly lighter question as well. Um, how do you make your ideal day? What does an ideal day look like for you? Mm. Do you have any thoughts? An ideal day for me? The wee things. You know? See some people that like, have a yarn with them, have a laugh with them. Get some sort of dessert, mm -hmm. maybe. You know? Like a something pistachio based. That's a good time. <laughs> I specific, do enjoy that. Man. Yeah, I do. I, you know, you gotta be specific with this thing. Uh, and then, you know, do an activity I like. Watch a film, you know, fucking. Watch something that makes me go, oh, fuck. Yeah, life is fantastic. Yeah. You know, see a sunset, yeah. you know. Forrest Gump? See a pair of daddies and a white tank top. Boss night. Great. It's great to be here. And then, uh, you know, do something that makes me feel like I'm like, fuck, I have a purpose here. You yeah. Know? I have some shit that I want to do and I want to get better at it and I'm just crafting away at it. Would you do stand-up in that day? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Would you do a set, yeah? Ideal day, top it all off, end of the night, go up, do a set, hang out with people after, enjoy myself and then maybe have a wee beer to myself as well. That's uh, an ideal day right there. Oh, right? Well, I'm only on there. It doesn't get any better. I like... Um, you know, getting up this morning, going into Eddie's room before he woke up, you know, sneak in the bed beside him. Coddles. Nice. No, that's nice. Because that's only ha started to happen recently where, like, the motherfucker's not waking up in the middle. But it would be, like, a little bit of family. You know, I like the buzz of getting ready to go somewhere, you know, like, oh, we're going to do this, like a little adventure. Go somewhere I haven't really been before. Eat a thing in a place I haven't eat eaten before. Again, with... With friends and families. Yes. You know, um, maybe, you know, maybe throw a gig in there. But like an absolute setter of a gig where I don't have to do anything. No prep. Yeah. I roll in. Go, hey, guys. See see all the, the comedy boys. And then get that, get that gig buzz. Then the beers after that. In a sort of, I mean, ideally this doesn't exist, but you know, like a gig that happened to happen by the sea yeah you know and you could go straight from a gig to like a, a, a fire on the beach <sighs> bro and then fucking 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 squirt 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 bust 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 and then a lie in the next day mm, rinse repeat yeah, yeah. oh need your rinse <laughs> You ever see that video of uh, they ask Keanu Reeves like what your perfect day is? Look oh, at no him, shit. look at him, and he's like, sex, and then I do something else, and then more sex with a different woman, and then sex, sex, and fucking and sex. Keanu Reeves like, perfect. oh shit, it's the second search result when you look up his name. Leaving these, listen, life's a bitch. Someone has to do it, and it's tough at the top. And we'll see you. Projects. If you have a day off, do you have some perfect day off? Some things that you like to do when you have not work, not just being on stage? Yeah, 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 there's lots of great stuff to do, yeah. 
<laughs> you're like, what? I don't know. You like, I don't know. Well, okay. First of all, hopefully, you know, you're you've finished a great job. You've done some great work. Nice. You're coming home. You see some friends and family. You know, hopefully you're in a relationship, you have some morning sex, eat a nice. great breakfast, go for a motorcycle ride, come back, swim, have more sex, nice. eat some more, um, hang out for a little bit, maybe do some reading, you know, go see a movie, have more sex, nice. go to the bar, have a couple of drinks, see some friends, take a motorcycle ride, get home, hang out a little bit, have more sex. Nice. Um, that's a pretty good day. I love your life. <laughs> So has anyone thought of a good eye of... <laughs> Guys, just like, oh, interesting, Carol. I'm bricked up talking to you right now. <laughs> Guys on and off our bike and in the post all day. <laughs> it seems like... <laughs> Some stamina. Just on the bike, off in the pool, reading sex. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Whoa. <laughs> the sex and breakfast combo is oh, truly yeah. magical. Yeah. I, for, I left out brunch. I would definitely brunch with, <laughs> brunch with the family. Yeah. You know? That'll be thrown in there. Yeah. You know, maybe a motorcycle ride, maybe some sex. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> great times. Great times. Guys, thank you very much for listening. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Get yourself onto the Patreon. Yes. Tell me this now. Will this week's Patreon be a live podcast? Yes. It will. Get yourself onto patreon.com slash bomb squad pod and you can check out our live podcast recorded at Lavery's Comedy Club. And uh, that's it, my guys. By this stage, our live podcast at uh, our big venue will be on sale. Oh, yeah. So make sure to pick up tickets to that if they aren't already motherfucking gone. Shut up, bitch. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs> God bless you. God bless. Good luck and fuck yourself. There you go.